it's amazing how fucking unique every creature is. All life. So all do, life. So wants do you to think as like do you think we stop evolving? Like will humans evolve even more? I think we one hundred percent are currently evolving. It's just a slow, gradual process. But what is next for humans? <sighs> unfortunately like unlocking more parts of the brain to be more intelligent i think unfortunately biology and technology are going to mix and that's the next stage mm. of evolution have what some I, real meta humans yes that's what i'm i'm really sure that that's what's going to happen but i mean was, not 100 percent sure because the, the thing that could throw a monkey wrench into that is some sort of a natural disaster like uh, an asteroid impact the great super reset volcano, some sort of a reset yeah a reset i mean we've had those i feel like, like I, i've been obsessed with reading into the great resets and a mm. lot of things that didn't happen and you know they claiming that technology was actually here before oh, it is 100 percent, it was and then some of the people that survived just wasn't smart it, well, it's not just that. It's like the way you had to survive was barbaric. Like if you go back to the Younger Dryas Impact Theory, that's the most fascinating one. And that's 12,800 that? years ago. They believe that Earth uh, was hit by fragments of comets and it probably destroyed most of civilization. It they There's a guy named Graham Hancock and a guy named Randall Carlson and they've spent years and years working on this with legitimate scientists like if they do core samples when they take a core sample of the earth when they go down to 12,000 years they find a high level of iridium which is very rare on earth but very common in space and that's also what they find when they look at the asteroid impact that killed the dinosaurs mm -hmm. in um, in the um, uh, near Chichen Itza in that area they find that too like this this level of iridium indicates that something hit and that there is uh, like significant levels of it around 12,800 years ago which also coincides with the end of the Ice Age and these folks believe that the Ice Age ended abruptly like very quickly with massive floods and that's probably where the flood of Noah and the Ark comes from and and uh, the stories in the Epic of Gilgamesh and all these different I wonder how many tales. people on Earth it was at that time. They were probably very, very sophisticated. If you look at the pyramids and you look at some of the structures in Egypt and all that stuff in northern Africa, what those people were doing is unexplainable even today. I don't give a fuck what any... I've read every fucking theory on how they built those pyramids. The Great Pyramid of Giza has 2,300,000 stones in it. Some of them, uh, the way between two and 80 tons. Some of them are cut from a quarry that's hundreds of miles away. These things point, that pyramid is shaped perfectly. Like if you fucked up like a quarter inch there, a half inch here, by the time you get to the top, that thing's a mess. But meanwhile, it's not. It's perfect. It's also perfectly aligned to true north, south, east, and west. And they're not really sure how old it is. They think it's, they, they, they dated to 2500 BC. But that's just because of organic particles that they pulled from inside stones. But they, they also say that they probably could have sealed those stones and resealed those stones over time. You're dealing with like a gigantic mystery of unfathomable proportion. That's crazy. So if, if, if there was a civilization, and let's assume there was, that was thousands of years old in, in Egypt that was capable of doing things that we're not capable of doing today, what kind of technology were they working with? That's what we I'm don't, saying. We really don't know. Now, something comes along like that Younger Dryas impact theory and just fucking asteroids Everything everywhere. Wrong. Boom, boom, knocks the whole population of the world down to 100,000 people or a million people. Maybe there's, maybe there's like a billion people on the planet and nine out of ten of them are dead. How many of them know how to build a pyramid? That's what I'm saying. They all from Mississippi. Yeah. They survive. Well, you know, that's the story of the Amazon rainforest, too. Do you know the story of the Amazon no. rainforest? The Amazon rainforest used to be thriving with cities. And they found that out very recently because of something called LIDAR. And LIDAR is this thing where they fly over the jungle and they have this light emitting radar that goes down and it finds all these grids. Like some predator that, and, shit. Well, sort of. Yeah. It's like, it, well, it's super sophisticated technology that allows yeah. you to survey areas without doing actual excavations. So they don't have to excavate the land, but they, they can fly over and they see irrigation. They see grids that matched out cities. They think the Europeans came through and killed everybody with smallpox. And then the jungle just took over itself. And then what you see as the Amazon rainforest, you want to really freak out? That's a man-made rainforest. 
You ready for this? Good all them fucking go, go, a- anacondas and all that. And no, the, all that stuff lives there. That's all natural. But, but the plant life, most of what the Amazon is from is from early agriculture yeah. that just got out of control after the people were dead. The That's Amazon. Crazy. This is the Smithsonian is reporting on this. This is look at this. The supposedly pristine, untouched Amazon rainforest was actually shaped by humans over thousands of years. Native people played a strong role in molding the ecology of this vast wilderness. Now this is from 2017. Now this is what they knew back then that the native people had something to do with it because of the, a bunch of different plants that they have that um uh, they, they they know these people planted. So here it says their um, 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus' voice, New World. The native people were transparent in the landscape, living as natural elements of the ecosphere of the world, a world of barely perceptible human disturbance. Okay, that's not true anymore. That's what they used to think. Th- then they started using LIDAR. When they started using LIDAR, then they started finding evidence of cities. And Graham Hancock believes there was millions and millions of people living in these cities that were in the Amazon. Millions. They just didn't have the antibodies to deal with the fucking European diseases. Fuck. Look, you think about what the Europeans, when they came over to America, they killed 90% of the Native Americans, all with diseases. You know, there's a, there's a genocide. A lot of people think it, they just butchered everybody. They butchered a lot of people. Yeah. Don't, no, but 90%? No, but 90% died from diseases. And that's the same thing with the Mayans. The Mayans just disappeared. Where'd they go? Well, if you read the, the, the stories of Cabeza de Vaca, a, a, a land so strange, they talk about running into the Mayans. They talk about people with these like incredible uh, like headdresses and these glorious buildings, this advanced civilization. Then they go back... 100, 200 years, there's no one. No one's there. Why? Because of fucking smallpox. Because everybody came through with diseases, and all these people had no immunity to it. So they wiped out everybody. What do you think the natives was thinking when they first saw the motherfuckers come over? Imagine seeing a boat. Imagine seeing one of those 